But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you when he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of the sinful man and be crucified, and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And then one of them named Cleopas answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and so of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going further, but they strongly urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple praising God. This scripture and the events that happened between the death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus bring us through how hopelessness and despair really became hope and joy. And when I think about how the disciples must have felt after Jesus' death, I think it must have been filled, they must have been filled with despair, that it must have been so sad. They had to watch their friend and their mentor and this person that they had been walking with suffer and die on the cross. And that just had to be so sad. But not only that, this person that they believed would be the Messiah had just died. They'd watched him perform all these miracles and heal these people and raise people from the dead, and now he was gone. And if Jesus was gone, then where did hope go? 
And had he stayed dead, hope really would have been gone. He wouldn't have fulfilled scripture, and so he wouldn't have been the source of our salvation. But we know, and they come to know, that Jesus didn't stay dead. And he goes through this process of meeting them and revealing himself to them, and they are filled with so much doubt and skepticism and fear because the Lord has prevented them from really understanding scripture. But Jesus reveals scripture to them. He walks them through how his life, through his death, and now his resurrection have fulfilled what the the Lord has said and promised that the Messiah would be and the source of salvation would be. And they are filled with joy to have confirmation that God's promises are true. Their hope is restored because Jesus has risen from the dead and paid for their sins so that they may live eternally with God. And God has provided the same joy and the same hope for us, that Jesus did not stay dead. He lived his life perfectly and without sin. He got on the cross and took the punishment of all our sins. He rose after three days and ascended into heaven, exactly as God promised that he would. So we have hope that all that God has promised is true, that everything God has written in the Bible is true because Jesus came and showed us that it's true. And that God has so much love for us that he desires eternity with us and he paved a way for that to happen through Jesus. So I hope that this brings all of us hope and joy today, that darkness and death didn't win then and they don't win now because God is true to his promises and he's true to his love for us.